Hi, how's it going? Today we're going to create a tool tip for both our UI and for in-world objects so that if you hover over the object in the UI, it'll have a tool tip that goes towards the center of the screen and has a unique message about the object over which you're hovering. And then um, the ability to have in-world objects that have got uh, a tool tip that appears where it is um, on the screen. Okay, let's go. We're going to create our UI uh, that'll show us our, our tool tipper. Okay, so I'm going to create a panel. Um, and I'm going to say that it's a pretty small panel. I'm going to put it right in the center of the screen. Uh, so it's 100 and 100. All right, so 100 pixels by 100 pixels. We'll call this our tool tip panel. We're going to give it a child text mesh pro okay if you don't have text mesh pro in your in your project you need to import it this will help you immensely uh with the resizing of text and its legibility okay regular text gets super blurry when you zoom in on it um text mesh pro handles that a lot better so we'll put a text mesh pro uh we'll stretch that we'll say that zero 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 okay so We'll auto size it and then we'll give it a auto size minimum of eight and a maximum of a hundred, let's say. And then um, we can put it in the center of that uh, space. Okay. And then I'm going to default this to error. Okay. So if we aren't setting this up properly in the scene, then uh, the default text, the default message will be error. Okay. And we'll rename that to toolpiff text to be super clear. All right. Okay, we need to create two new scripts. We need to create something called a tool tipper, and we're going to put this on each object uh, where we want to have a tool tip pop up for that object, uh, whether it be on the UI or something in the world. And then we're going to have kind of a tool tip manager where once we do put our mouse over something, this is what's going to manage uh, where it appears, uh, excuse me, how that how that mm, position is translated onto the screen. So, for example, if it's in the UI, it's pretty simple to, to put the tooltip somewhere here. Whereas if it's in the world, you have to do uh, what's called a, a world to screen position uh, transformation from the camera. So we'll call this the screen tooltip. Let's call it a manager because there's only one and we're going to make this into a singleton. All right, so let's go ahead and double click on the screen tooltip manager and we'll jump into that. So the first thing that we want to do for our uh, tooltip manager is create a, a singleton. And I'm going to create an immutable singleton. So I got a private static um, screen tooltip manager instance and I'm going to default that to null and I have a public static screen tooltip manager which I can access from anywhere in the uh, project and we're going to uh, reference the private instance on this class and in the awake function we are going to put um, if instance is null then we will say that the instance is this and if there's another instance that is else destroy immediate this script right and we're going to put this in a region so that we only see this when we want to just like my parents did to me okay so the script is actually going to manage all of our, our UI for the, the tooltip. So we're going to have a game object that holds the all the UI that, that's in this uh, class. Uh, and we're going to call this the uh, tooltip object. All right. So we activate this when, uh, when we have our mouse over something, either in the UI or in the world. And then we have a transform so that we can move the uh, object. Um, without doing a bunch of uh, tooltip object transform position. Okay, so we just simplify that slightly. So say, uh, let's call it transform tooltip. So it's a little easier to access. We'll put the transform 
uh, in the first part of the name, and then we have a private. We need to bring in the uh, text mesh pro um, namespace for this. So if you don't have text mesh, uh, text mesh pro, then you need to import that into your into your project. Okay. So if you just right click in your screen in your scene and i've got unity 2019.3 if you right click in your scene and try to add a ui text text mesh pro then it'll automatically give you an option to import that into your scene um, into your project okay so let's call this text and we'll call it to, to, for the same reason that um, it's easier to access if we just put the text first so uh, if we put tooltip first, then, then we're going to see all the objects that have uh, tooltip in the name, and then we have to find the one that says text. So we'll put text first. Okay, so we want to have a public access function function that says uh, set uh, tooltip at position at position with message. So we're going to have a really descriptive uh, uh, function name here. We're going to say that the position is a vector three and the string message. And then we need to have something called uh, is two dimensions. So we're going to default that to true. So if it's two dimensions, then we're going to give it a certain position. And if it's not two dimensions, we're going to give it a certain other position. And we'll have access routines for that uh, below this one. Okay. So what we're going to do is say uh, tooltip object, we're going to activate it and we're going to give the text a message. Right. So we'll just set the message on the tooltip text. Um, and then if it's, all right, so this is a little more complicated. So we're going to say that the position depends on whether or not this is in two, two, uh, two D, uh, two dimensions. So, Let's first set up these two vector three get position get position and let's say 2d and we're just going to default that to vector 3.0 and get position vector three get pose 3d and we'll default that to vector 3.0 as well just for the time being so that we can set this up. Right, so we're going to send our transform to that position, transform uh, tooltip uh, dot position equals if is two dimensions. And we're going to use the ternary operator. So if it is two dimensions, then the, then the first uh, thing that we have here is going to be get pose 2D. And if not, then if it returns false, then get position 3D, right? Okay. Okay, we need to go back into the project. We need to open our tool tipper and set up that script. In this script, we need to have a string, which is going to be our tool tip, the text that we show on the, uh, on the UI. Okay, and we're going to set that as a serializable field so that we could default this to something um, that we set up in the scene, all right? It doesn't necessarily have to be set up dynamically in a script. Okay, so um, if, the, if this is an object in the world, we need to have something called on mouse enter. So if, if the mouse enters this object, if it enters this object's collider, um, we'll say must have collider to use this callback. Okay, so the object must have a collider, otherwise on mouse enter won't work. So when, when we do enter, we're going to say that if there is a uh, screen manager, uh, screen tooltip manager. Uh, let me just find that, sorry. Okay, so if there's a screen tooltip manager instance, um, then we're going to access that, that function that we just set up. So the instance dot set tooltip at position with uh, message and the position is this object's position so transform that position and it's, the message is the tooltip that we just set up and then if it's two dimensions or not and uh, this is not two dimensions 
if if we're in on malice enter it's because it, it entered an object in the scene in in the 3d world sorry so we're going to set that to false okay right perfect um and then we can set something on private void on mouse exit and we'll say that uh we're going to write in the the method for this in a second so screen tooltip manager dot instance and we're going to say that once we exit this object we're going to deactivate the tooltip so let's say deactivate uh tooltip and that's it and we're just going to turn off the tooltip ui okay so that object if you remember um, deactivate tooltip Right, so if you remember, we have this object called the tooltip object, and we're just going to set that to uh, set active false. Okay, perfect. Okay, one more thing before we test this out. We're going to put in a private vector 3D. We're going to call this center screen. So this will just be the center of our, our, our screen. Um, center screen position let's call it and we'll say it's a new vector three it only has two coordinates okay because the screen position i mean the screen is only done in, in uh, the x and the y axis so we'll access screen and we'll say width for the x axis and screen height for the y axis okay so screen center screen is actually um in the center in in the middle of those of those places so we divide each of those by two and that'll give us a, the center of the screen so uh, before we test that with um, positions that relate directly to where the the UI is or the uh, 3d object is we're just going to place the tooltip in the in the center of the screen regardless of the thing that we're we're putting our mouse over okay so let's just say center screen position We'll set our tooltip to the center screen position. Good. Okay, so let's go back into the scene. Um, on the event system, this is normally where I put all my managers. Okay, so I'm going to put my screen tooltip manager, and I'm going to make sure to go into my canvas and find my tooltip object. I get my tooltip transform, which is the same object, um, and then our tooltip text. Okay. <clears throat> so whenever we put our, our mouse over something this is what's gonna what's gonna pop up this right here all right so I defaulted that text to error so so that I know that if it's not um, set by some object in the scene then there's a there's a problem okay uh, so let's go into three different objects let's say the tractor the trailer and the barrel we're gonna put our tool tipper and we're going to say uh, something descriptive about these about these objects. So let's say for the barrel, uh, it's a barrel, obviously a barrel, right? A red tractor and a uh, trailer. So if you've got a game, you want to put something descriptive so that the player knows uh, what they can do with this object. So a trailer that can carry up to 1,000 kilograms uh, kg of objects, right? So when we press play and we put our mouse over these objects, over the tractor, uh, the trailer, and the barrel. Uh-oh. Well, I don't know what happened with the barrel. Uh, the barrel, okay, so here's what I was talking about before. The barrel doesn't have a collider so the tooltip won't work. Remember that mouse enter thing only works if this thing has a collider. So I'm gonna put a box collider on it. All right, uh, let's take a look at how that looks. That box collider, okay, that's a pretty good deal. So now when we put our mouse over it, it's working, the tooltip works, perfect. Okay, there are a few more crucial things that we need to add to this tool tipper uh, component. We need to add the uh, namespace, the Unity Engine uh, event systems. Okay, this has some very useful interfaces. Uh, and we're going to take two of them. We get I pointer enter handler and I pointer exit handler. 
and then we're going to implement these. Okay, so we'll take uh, implement interface. So I'm right clicking, I'm clicking quick actions and refactorings, and then implement interface. I'm sorry that you guys can't see that. I need to get a new screen capture. Okay, so I'm going to put a region. Let's say event. Let's say pointer events. Uh, implementation. Okay, and then we'll close that region. All right, so this is for our UI, right? Remember that because it doesn't have a, a collider on it, we're going to uh, do our stuff from, from here. So I'm just going to copy that set position. This actually is a 2D. This will always be 2D. If, if our pointer enters a 2D object on the screen, then it'll, it'll work in the 2D space. If, if you remember that we put this 2D dimension uh, Boolean variable here so that we can get the tooltip to appear uh, next to this uh, object. Okay, so set tooltip at position with method message, and we only need to pass through the position and the tooltip message okay and then in the uh, pointer exit we're just going to deactivate um, <clears throat> the tooltip so when the pointer leaves this object then we deactivate the tooltip really easy we'll test that so let's test out that change that we just made um, I've got this prefab that holds all the information about my um, about the things that I can build in my world. Okay, so I'm going to add the tool tipper. You can see I've already added that component, the tool tipper. I add it and I just gave it a default message. Okay, so when we hover over one of these things, we're going to see that default message right in the center of the screen. All right, so there we go. All right, I hover over these. This calls the eye pointer um, enter and the eye pointer exit once I, I leave that object. Okay. Now we don't necessarily want to see um, our tooltips in the center of the screen. We're going to put them next to the objects, whether they be in, in the 3D space or 2D space. So if, uh, let's just put them directly on the objects that, that we've got. So, uh, so if we've got a 2D object, we're going to pass in its position. Okay, and then we're going to say uh, position. Okay, so all we're doing is returning that position that we just passed in. Later, we're going to modify this. Okay, but we're going to do this with both 3D and uh, 2D. Okay, so when we when we activate the the, the tooltip, it'll be directly over the object. Okay. In this case, in the case of a 3D object, we actually need to do camera.main.world to screen point and pass in the position. So that'll actually put it where it is in, in the world, okay? Uh, and that's super important that you access this. And of course, it won't uh, change position if we leave this in. So we're gonna uncomment this and delete the center screen. So if it's two dimensions, we will go to this uh, position and if it's three dimensions we'll go to this position okay so here we are we're going into the game world we're going to go over the red track to right that's right over that object's position so that camera main um, function is going to put it directly over the objects position in the world space and uh, because we we added that collider earlier in uh, in play mode it didn't save okay so we can see that all those work in world space and then here we're going to see that's the problem with with uh ui is it's going to put it directly over it and then the camera is raycasting to to the tooltip object and then to the thing behind it. So uh, that's why it flickers like that. So we'll, we'll give that an offset and it'll, it'll go towards the center of the screen. 
All right, so now we're going to fix that that overlay. So where our 2D objects were overlaying our UI, we're going to change that. Okay, we're going to make sure that we offset the position by the width of the uh, the tooltip UI. Okay, there's a huge change that I made made here. All right, so this object because it's UI is actually a rect transform. Okay. So this actually makes things easier for us because this holds a rect um, structure and that holds a width. Okay, so the width of our, our tooltip. And that's really important for, for how we're going to offset this. Uh, and we're also going to offset it in the direction of the center of the screen. So what we're going to do is get another uh, vector 3, but we're going to call this, let's say, position towards center. Okay, and we'll pass in the position of the object and then we'll return uh, the normalized direction of the position uh, towards the center of the screen. So we'll say screen, center of screen uh, minus our position. Okay, and then we're actually going to normalize that. So let's put this in parentheses and then normalize it. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by the uh, transform of our tooltip, so transform tooltip, rect width, and that's it. Okay, so that'll move towards the center of the screen with this direction, and then by an amount that's equal to the width of our, our tooltip object. Okay, so when we, for the sake of, of uh, syntax, let's Okay, so for the sake of keeping these uh, function names short, we're going to keep this in getPose 2D and getPose 3D. So we'll say we're going to make the tooltip appear at position plus the offset towards the center of the screen. So let's pose towards center and we pass in the position again. And now this is a little different with the uh, 3D position because we have to account for the... Um, position that's getting transferred from world space into screen space. We're actually going to save this into a vector 3 screen pose. And then we will we'll do the same thing. We'll, we'll return screen pose plus position towards center of screen pose. And save. So we're in play mode and we should see that this goes towards the center of the screen. So if I move my camera over here, if I move my object over here to the left, it'll go to the right because that's where the center of the screen is. If I move it to the right, it goes towards the left. All right, so that looks good for our 3D objects. And then for our 2D objects, same thing. You can see that it's up slightly to the left and this is down slightly to the left. Okay, now if we had this on the other side of the screen, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and move that to the other side of the screen. Uh, I'll change the max to point two. I'll change the mid to point zero, and then move that right over there. Okay, so and that's exactly what we would expect. So now it's down to the right and up to the to the right. Okay, all right. Okay, so we've seen where we can add the tooltip or to an object in the scene, and and it has a hard coded message. Uh, that we write in the scene view, okay, and that's not exactly what we want, all right? What we want is to be able to uh, spawn this object into the into the world and then have some unique information about it. For example, Billy's tractor, uh, it's got this much gasoline, it's carrying such and such object, and then maybe at the bottom have a description about it, okay? So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So I've got these buildings and I've got these prefabs with that building. All right, on the building, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the prefab. I'm going to add our tooltip component. Okay, and I'm not going to default the message to anything. Um, so I'll add that to my prefab. Okay, so if you've got a lot of them, all you have to do is select all, uh, and then you can add component to, to multiple uh, objects, okay? So we know that we have these components on here now. Um, so what I could do here to demonstrate that is 
this is taking one of those prefabs it's going to build it into the world all right and then i'm going to select that barn and we'll see that it has the tool tipper on it okay so we'll access this building component okay we'll go in there and in the building on the on the building's creation we're actually going to find the tool tipper on its um, objects and we're going to say tool tipper t equals get component uh tool tipper we could for example add a component but we want to know what our prefabs have uh so we'll do it this way okay so if that if that component's not null um then we'll say t uh set message excuse me what is our tool tipper uh we don't have anything for this okay so this is a good time to add a function to add messages and we'll do this under all of our built-in and uh implemented things so we have these built-in functions we'll put this in a, in a region and hide them already and then we'll have a public function that says set message message and when we do that we'll just say that the tooltip equals the message right now we save and we go back to our, our building and we're going to say tooltip set message and we'll just pass in uh, a little description so i've got these blueprints for the buildings and the blueprint has a description on it so i'm just going to pass in the description okay and let's take a look at that when we place buildings in the scene. So we just added the tool tipper to the building. All right, we're going to build one and then we're going to see that we've got that, that message now. Okay, so that's just that basic description that we've uh, added to it. Now, what we want to do is, is add that same thing to our UI so that when we hover over our UI, we can see that it's got a, a different message than, than what you see here. So if we go into the scene where I'm storing those, uh, that building information, okay, uh, all this is stored right here in the buildables panel, okay? And each of these is a container and it's got a button and a, and a text with cost. So I've already added the tool tipper component. Now it doesn't, it's not being accessed. Um, by the blueprint slot UI. Otherwise, we could put a, a, a message in there. So we'll open the blueprint uh, slot UI and then we'll access the tool tipper and add a dynamic message based on the information about these objects. And here we'll do the same thing as we did before. We'll get access to, to our tool tipper uh, by doing a get component tool tipper and check that it's not null and say tool tipper set message and we'll say that the blueprint description is the message that we want to have on the tooltip and we'll test it and now when i hover over my ui i can see uh the same description that i have um, for in-world objects and we'll change the way that these in-world objects display their message because it's it's not enough that they just display the description about them because we already know that what we want to know is something specific about this particular instance of the object okay so i'll show you how i did that okay so i've gone back into my building component i'm going to add a little bit to this uh if block where we uh check if the tool tipper is not null okay so we're going to add a new message uh to the tooltip and we're going to say that it's equal to the building name which is its unique name um, not just the name of the object in the in the hierarchy okay we'll add two lines and we'll say it's some price uh, and we'll put that as its value and that value can vary based on uh, characteristics of, of whatever this building is and then we'll put in that same description that we had before okay so this is a pretty good tool to tells you a bit more than it did before and we'll pass that message into the tool tipper all right we'll save and then we'll check it in the scene 
So we enter plant load and we'll build one of these buildings. We'll take a farm, build that, and then we'll, we'll put in a couple of plants. Uh, so you can see that this building now has a, a name, it's got a sell price, and then it's got that description from four, and then each of these plants. Uh, okay, so we actually have three different names that these plants could have, so plant a couple of more. Okay, so we've got different names for each of these plants. Let's say that, you know, some get more water, it produces better fruit, then we could say that the sell value is higher okay and we could set that later dynamically based on changes to the plant but for this tutorial i just wanted to show you how i uh would put this message into the to the tooltip okay so that gives you a more dynamic tooltip so if you've ever needed a description to pop up next to something that you're hovering over then this is the video that uh, you needed to watch okay you can now put a tooltip in the world, or at least make it look like it's in the world next to your objects in the world and next to your UI objects. Uh, as far as assets that I used, I used Cinti Studios Farm Pack. Uh, they have tons and tons and tons of different models. All of them are, are polygon models. They've got even simpler stuff than this with their, their uh, mini packs the prototyping packs uh, i use a lot of different Cinti studios uh, assets and then as far as the icons that you see here i used flaticon.com and i used a pack from smash icon it's a hundred pack a hundred icons in this pack all of them were free and um, this was called the agriculture pack so you only see two here, but there, there's a hundred more, uh, 98 more. All right. Um, if you guys have any suggestions for me, that I talk too slow, I talk too fast, uh, explain things too little or too much. Uh, just let me know in the comments and uh, I'll try to fix that for you. Thanks a lot. See you next week.